Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, if you're new here, my name is Jeanette and I give prophetic messages. So happy Sunday everybody. Um, I have a quick word to share with you guys. Um, I was just, you know, I was going to go through my Bible and I felt as though the Lord just like opened it up for me in Song of Songs. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to break some things down really quickly because a lot of us are obviously like the Lord is stepping us into marriage. And um, this is a topic that, you know, I only talk about if he wants me to talk about it just because it's something that's really happening. Like if I'm being very honest, it's something that he has promised. He has promised many of his children during this time. And a lot of you guys um, are waiting on the Lord to bring you your spouse. So this word today is about marriage, about kingdom marriages. Um, and again, please take this word before the Lord. Sorry if you guys hear that. I'm washing clothes today, but take this word before the Lord and pray over this word. Pray to God that this word covers you. That this word is for you in due season. So let's pray and we'll just get right into this. Father God, thank you for this word. Thank you for your children. Thank you that you're opening our hearts into receiving what you have to share with us and what you have to tell us and reveal to us, Lord, in this hour. We just thank you as we wake up. Your wonderful mercies as we wake up in the morning. You give us joy in the morning, Lord, and you give us a fresh new day. And today we're just declaring and decreeing, Jesus, your word over our lives that you have your way with us and that this word is sealed and protected by the blood of Jesus. Amen. I am so sorry, that's really loud, but um, yeah, so I'll just try to make this word pass. So obviously, like if you guys read in Song of Songs, you know that it's a very poetic, it's a very intimate, romantic book in the Bible. That's how wonderful God is, that he didn't leave those important details out. He has a word for everything. So the day I woke up and the Lord was like, let's talk about this. So. I just want to share with you guys, um, I'm not going to read anything. I'm just going to lead you to the scriptures. Um, he gave me Song of Songs chapter 5 through 8. So it's a big read, but I was just really blessed to read it and to know that the Lord really does care about our um, our needs when it comes to like being intimate and being and when we get married and when we find somebody that our heart longs for and desires, the Lord is obviously like, so the Lord is very caring to these things. So don't think when you have those thoughts, like, you know, desires and, and, and just marriage and relationships, that's part of God's plan as well. That's why he gave you that desire so you can have faith in him. So I'm not going to read it, but I do want to highlight, I did write some things down so I wouldn't forget, but I wrote some things down about a lot of you guys, and this is for um, um, men and women in Christ, you know, sons and daughters in Christ that are waiting on the Lord. This word is for you. You'll know it's for you. It'll sit right in your spirit, especially if you've been waiting on the Lord. So God is saying in this hour, you guys, when going into marriage, not only is it just about love and passion and all these exciting feelings, and that's wonderful. He wants that for two people coming together. But the Lord is also saying that it's not only just love that glues everything together, but it's also, it's intimacy, it's it's freedom and it's a partnership and it's a friendship. And so I know most of you guys on here are most likely in a waiting for your spouse. You you may know this person, you may not know this person, you've been waiting for God to reveal who this person is. Um, you maybe have met recently and God kind of pulled you guys away so you guys can grow individually in your own you know, um, walks with the Lord to then bring you back together. The Lord um, obviously has spoken to a lot of you guys. I get a lot of emails concerning these things and the Lord is faithful. And just know that when he puts that desire there, that's his desire. So the thing is, he wants us to have faith in the waiting and know that he can do it. So don't give up, okay? Just keep pressing in and keep holding on to your faith because you will see, you will reap a reward for your obedience. So I do want to tap into here, you know, a lot of you guys stepping into marriage. Um, just understand and know that, and it says it in this word, that this is where I'm getting these notes from, you guys. I'm getting these notes from the word. 
And um, the Lord is saying, you know, um, in the eyes of Solomon, his beautiful bride, you know, she was, she was this um, valuable, she was his favorite valuable wise woman. And um, I will read, I'm going to read my note and this goes to uh, verse chapter eight. So this goes to chapter eight, verse eight through nine. Let me read the scripture. So chapter eight, verse eight through nine, I'll read it to you and then tell you the note of what it says in my Bible because it really blessed me. So we have a little sister and her breasts are not yet grown. What shall we do for our sister on the day she is spoken for? If she is a wall, we will build towers of silver on her. If she is a door, we will enclose we will enclose her with panels of cedar. So I'm gonna read my note for that. So it says, the girls reflecting on the days when she was younger and under the care of her brothers, who wondered how to help her prepare for marriage. They decided that if she remained a virgin before marriage, standing, standing firm like a wall against sexual temptation, they would praise her. But if she was like a door open to immorality, they would take steps to guard her from doing something foolish. In chapter 8, verse 10, she testifies that she has been persistent in her morality and thus has found favor in Solomon's eyes. So the reason why I'm sharing this is because like many of us have been waiting, the Lord doesn't, he doesn't waste the waiting. He doesn't, um, you know, he sees our purity, that we're honoring our own purity and waiting isn't easy. So he's saying in the temptations when they come, then sexual morality and all these things when they come, that you know how to... Um, put it in God's hands. You know how to look at it and view it through the lens of purity. And it, like I said, it's not easy, but you find favor in the eyes of the Lord and he honors that. So if many of you guys have been waiting in purity and you've been fighting it and it's tempting and you know, all these like little things are happening around you trying to get you to kind of climb off course, just know that first of all, don't condemn yourself. Just know that the Lord does forgive if you fall off. Just know that go before the lord ask for forgiveness and just continue to press into god and just stay close to him because he will lead the way if you honestly just tell the lord i need help in this area it's okay to be honest with god he loves when we're honest because that's a chance for him to fix us from the inside out and i'll go back to what i read because you know this young bride found favor in solomon's eyes who this was her man. This was the, the man she desired. Uh, when he found favor through her, it was because of her, her purity. It was because of her holding off and waiting on the Lord. Those desires were there. It's okay that, you know, we have desires and we long for somebody and we long for a husband, but just know that in that process as well, she was a blessing to Solomon. She was also tending her vineyard, but she always gave the fruits to him. So you see how it's a partnership. So the Lord is saying in this hour, it's not just about like doves in the eyes. He's not saying it's always going to be like that when times get tough you guys can come together as a partnership and also as friends. It's okay to be friends with your person first, okay? Okay, because I had to learn this. Um, we think, you know, mainstream media and pop culture will tell you nobody wants to wait. Like, who's waiting these days? Move on, go to the next person. But there's so much beauty in waiting. There's so much that you learn about God and you learn about yourself and you learn about the other person when you choose to wait and become a friend first. I think a lot of times people run away from like a friend zone, but the friend zone, you know, if you look at it from the, the lens and the perspective of just being a friend to somebody, I think more than anything nowadays, we need more friends than we need um, people just have it coming with agendas, people coming with all sorts of things. So this is my message to encourage you guys right now that if you're in a waiting season, learn to be a friend first, learn to be, because when you're a friend, you can be kinder and patient and all these things. So let's go to first Corinthians chapter 13. And, um, I'm going to read there what love means because, you know, a lot of us, maybe weren't taught this a lot of us don't know and i'm like your big sister i'm here to help y'all so <laughs> um i'm going through it too okay 
So we're all, we're all learning together while we're all growing together. So um, 1 Corinthians 13 says, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. And we all know love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. So, you know, when the Lord is obviously, he's, the Lord is moving, he's working and he's bringing people together. There's no doubt about it. The Lord spoke to me on this for months. So a lot of you guys today is, you know, as the Lord is moving you into this new season, um, always keep your eyes focused on the Lord and what he needs you to do. And also too, if, you know, you're waiting on somebody to come back, your prodigal, if you're waiting for, um, you know, your friends with somebody at the moment, maybe they don't know, or maybe, you know what I'm saying, you're praying for somebody else, the Lord is saying, be a friend first. When you can learn how to be a friend first, the Lord can really come in and just show up in between the both of you. So I will, I do wanna, um, wanna jump back to my notes in um, chapter seven, verse 10 to 13, I'm gonna read the note and it says, as a marriage matures, love and freedom between marriage partners should increase. Here the girl takes the initiative in lovemaking. Many cultures have stereotypes of the roles men and women play in lovemaking, but the security of true love, true love, gives both marriage partners the freedom to initiate acts of love. So if you're if you find yourself in this season of your life, in this moment of your life, you're waiting, you've never really done it before, this is new to you, you don't even know how to do it, you're really trusting in the Lord and having faith. The Lord honors that and he sees that. That doesn't go unnoticed. That doesn't, he doesn't waste anything that we're doing. He uses it for his glory. So the Lord is saying in this hour, for many of you guys that are waiting, he's saying have strength in him, have faith in him, and just know that everything that you need, if you're looking for that in a partner, go to God first and claim it and claim it from the Lord and go to the Lord first to receive all those things that you so desire, you so long for in a person. And this goes for many of you guys that are waiting on, you know, your kingdom person, your kingdom spouse. The Lord is really declaring right now. He's really speaking right now and saying, do not idle marriage as well. A lot of us, and I know that I went through this too, if I'm being very honest, we idle marriage and God is saying, I'm your husband first. I'm your first love. Jesus is our first love. And when you have an open and honest and romantic and intimate relationship with the Lord in your way, the way you guys have it, you and Jesus, he's saying, when you, when I have your heart, when I have your purity, when I have your honor, when I have your commitment, your partnership, your friendship, then he's ready to release you to somebody who's going to accept the same that he's been praying for. So remember when two kingdom people come together, when the Lord decides to release them, when they're ready to come together, it's gonna to be beautiful. It's gonna be like nothing you've ever imagined. So you're, it's gonna be what you longed for. And so in this path, I know it's not easy. I know many of you guys are probably, there are a lot of counterfeits, like I said, again, trying to come around and weave their way in, but don't fall for it and know what the Lord put on your heart and what he spoke to you. Um, and also too, there's a lot of deceitfulness going on, a lot of jealousy and envy. And remember, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 13, where the Bible says, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, it does not boast. So if you find yourself in a predicament, if you find yourself in a situation where it doesn't feel, you can't be yourself, you know, love allows you to be set free. Love, whether it's with a relationship with your family, whether it's with Jesus, love with Jesus allows you to be yourself, allows you to be set free. So those that despise you being who you are really are not for you anyways, okay? That word is for somebody. So I'm just praying right now over you that you are released from a situation that has been holding on to you, kind of like a, um, 
kind of like a bribe type of thing. If like you leave me, then this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to expose you to the whole world, your secrets. I don't know who this word is for, but I'm just declaring right now in Jesus' name that you're released from that. The Lord always comes in peace. Let me tell you something. When we release ourselves from soul ties, when we allow the Lord to really plunge us out of something that is some, it's so, it's confusing. You know what I'm saying? Like you're some of your situations, you guys are running in confusion with a person or with people it could be friends and the lord doesn't come like that the lord comes with wisdom and peace and understanding through him so if you find yourself in a situation that it's hard for you to leave a situ a person um a relationship just know that god obviously has better for you and people will often see that before you get blessed so they try to hold on to that blessing and they call it you know the American word for its potential, but I call it like people see, they can see your potential. They can see what the Lord is doing in your life. And, and oftentimes they'll try to hold you back to kind of hold on to you and hold on to the things that God is calling for you to do. So I'm just sharing with you guys right now, if you're going through a situation that's a little similar, maybe that's exactly your situation, just really ask the Lord to release you from it because he will, and he'll do it in such a way that you don't even have to lift a finger. Let me tell you, that's what I mean when the Lord says he fights our battles for us. We don't have to do absolutely anything. So I just want to encourage you guys right now. This is for all my singles and, and for all of those that are stepping into marriage. Just go into marriage with the heart of Jesus, with the wisdom of the Lord. Ask for his wisdom. This is a very important time to ask the Lord for wisdom so that you may walk in wisdom. And he will give you the authority. He'll give you, you know, all the fruits of his spirit to all of his fruits of his spirit to walk into something that is what you've been longing for. He's a good father. He will bless you as long as you wait on him. So um, just know, and then when there are certain doors that do close, maybe there's some confusion for some of you guys, maybe some doors with a person may have closed. Um, that's okay. Um, I know that's not always an easy thing. I know we experience like some sort of heartbreak and maybe we thought this person was for us, but the Lord always has something better lined up for us. He never leaves us high and dry. So I just want to encourage you guys with this word. Um, like I said, marriage is beautiful. When it, when two people are honoring the Lord with their marriage, it's a covenant between two people and the Holy Spirit. And the Lord is really going to use you guys during this time in your marriages to build your ministries, build, build things that he set forth for you guys to do so that many others can see you as an example and that you take leadership in this hour with your kingdom spouse. So just know that marriage is beautiful. I remember not so long ago, the Lord, I had a dream. I woke up, literally, I was just speaking as I woke up, marriage is good, marriage is good. I woke up and I was like, that is so funny. Um, it was part of my dream, but I woke up in reality, declaring those words. It was, it was almost as the Holy Spirit wanted me to really and truly uh, like engrave this in my heart and my spirit. And so now I'm viewing marriage as a good thing, even though the world around us makes it, you know, they taint it and they make it look like um, divorce is okay. And God more than anything wants um, partnerships and he wants people to come together before him. So whenever you feel like there's people trying to come against that, maybe talk against what you're waiting on, um, we don't listen to man, the Bible says. Trusting in man is very frail, so go to the Lord and trust in him for what he said he was going to do. So know that marriage is good. Marriage is here for many of you guys. And understand that um, purity is good. Purity is what sets you apart. People will look at you and they may not understand it, but I promise you, people watch. People are watching and they're seeing like, what is this person up to? What is she up to? What is he up to? And um, when you become an example, it's, it, it, it's such a powerful thing for other people because you're like, if that person can do it, so can I. So honor your body, honor your, your, the person that you're waiting on the Lord for, honor them, even if they're not ready right now, even if they're in a preparation, everybody has to go through a preparation before the Lord begins to bless them. So just know that, um, pray for your partner. Do not forget to pray for your partner. Um, it's okay. I know in the beginning for me, it was a little silly because I was like, I've never waited before, but I just know that the Lord is truly working in this hour. Pray for your spouse. This goes for men and women. Pray for your spouse. Pray for them because they could be going through something and your prayers will truly ignite the Lord and the Holy Spirit to intervene on their behalf. It's, um, 
intercession is interceding for them so always intercede keep them in prayers and um, when things come up against you when people come up against you with their deceitfulness and a lot of weird things just remember to stand in faith and know who god is and know that he fights for you you don't have to say a word just know and declare the goodness of the lord um so i'll end this video here and i'll end in prayer for you guys and then have a beautiful sunday Father, we just thank you in this hour. We thank you for bringing your kingdom spouses together. We thank you that you're raising them up right now. Every single one of them watching and listening, that this word is a confirmation to them that if they've been losing hope, Jesus, if they've been losing hope in the areas of what you spoke to them, that you just right now intervene and bring back joy, bring back laughter, bring back peace that surpasses all understanding, Father God. Give them wisdom as well to make proper decisions, Jesus. And thank you that you're aligning your your children right now to go out two by two that you're aligning them together but give them the wisdom give them the words of wisdom words of knowledge for marriage and what you think about marriage lord that we serve marriage through your eyes through your heart jesus and we just declare it and we thank you that we receive this word that this word is sealed and protected and it is alive right now as we speak in jesus mighty name we pray amen i hope you guys have a wonderful sunday i'll talk to you guys soon